This is part six in the final step in the assembly of our FreeNAS home server build. Now it's time to install the storage media. I went with three three terabyte Seagate NAS drives, which I then set up in a RAID Z1 ZFS setup. The benefit of using a ZFS storage type is that if one of your drives fails, they are all striped with parts of your data so if one of the drives does fail you are able to remove it and replace it with a new drive and uh, the other two drives will stripe that new drive with the missing information and none of your data will be lost. First you'll want to take one of your hard drive cages, place your hard drive in it making sure that your SATA power and uh, SATA data connection will be towards the back part of the drive cage itself. And then all you have to do is line up the holes with the anti-vibration mounting grommets that come with the Fractal Node 304 drive mounting cages. And then lock the drive into place with your four mounting screws that should have also come with the case. The screws that you will be mounting you can kind of see in the bottom right corner there but they have the extra large flat pan head on them. You can see by these drive cages, the reason I selected this particular case and why a lot of people use this case for a NAS build, it's able to hold six full-size three and a half inch hard drives, as well as a custom mounting if you take a couple of two and a half inch drives that can be mounted on the outside of the two outside cages. The anti-vibration little grommets that come with this case are excellent. They help to hold the drive in place securely and also when the drives spin up, uh, also keep them from rattling or making any noise. Now when mounting these drives, I tried to mount them all on the exact same side so the, there was the same amount of air space between each of them. It's probably not that necessary, but I am pretty particular about that kind of thing, so I made sure to do that. And if you only have three drives, definitely only put one drive per cage to make sure that there's plenty of airflow passing over each of the drives. Obviously, if you have more than three, you're going to have a couple of them stuffed into one, but you should still have plenty of airflow by the way the case is set up and the fans that are directly blowing upon them. Now if you do have more than three of these drives, it's much better for you to use a RAID Z2 or 3 setup. For RAID Z2 it is required to have a minimum of four drives, and in a perfect world you would actually be using this. I only had three drives for this build, so I had to use a RAID Z1. And it's likely that I'm going to add another drive and go to RAID Z2. The reason for this is that there is a larger likelihood with drives over one terabyte in a RAID Z1 setup to come up with uh, bad sectors and file corruption. If you want a technical explanation of all this, you can find lots of posts um, on the internet. Just do a web search and you can find uh, all the technical information about how that works. I'm not gonna get into that though. Now that the hard drives are mounted into the cages, we will install them into the case. You'll drop them into place. There are two thumb screws that go into the back. I recommend leaving them sort of loose until you get that small screw in the front tightened down into place because it can be a bit of a fight sometimes if the holes don't line up right. Once all three screws are in, then you can go back and tighten them all down firmly. Once you have all the screws on the first drive tightened down, it's time to drop in the next one. And you can see as we start to put these drive cages back in, we start to lose a lot of space within the case, which is why the cable and wire management is so important and crucial. And you'll definitely notice this after we get the three saddle cables connected to the hard drives as well as the SATA power cables. And then we drop in the third and final cage. 
and tighten it down like the other two, putting all the screws in loosely first and then going back through and tightening all of them down. And make sure that as you're installing these that you're not getting cables caught underneath the drives or within the cages. In any build, I always try to keep the cabling and wiring out of the center area of the case and off to the sides. And it helps when you think about this. Uh, think about the airflow, how it's moving through the case. You want to keep any obstructions and things out of the way they're going to reduce or um, stop your airflow to getting to the parts that need to be cooled. And once the hard drives are installed, that's pretty much it. Everything is installed, and the next part is probably one of the longest procedures, and that is going to be the cable routing and cable management. And this part is really up to you. You can run your cabling and wires however you want, as long as you make sure that they're not obstructing airflow through the case, and they're not going to get into any moving parts. Um, it is very important here to use cable ties or twisty ties or whatever you want to lock the cables in place so they do not move and uh, get caught up in fans and things like that. And right now I am connecting the SATA power and data cables to each of the hard drives. And then eventually once all of these are done it's time to route all of your cabling through the case and tie them all off. Check out the motherboard manual if you would like to connect your drives to the SATA 0, 1, 2, and 3 ports on your motherboard. I actually did this with each of my drives so I knew when I was looking in the BIOS settings or within the FreeNAS um, database which drive I was actually speaking to when I was setting it up. It can also be very helpful if you have a drive fail, if you have each of the cables or each of the drives labeled so you know which one actually needs replaced when you go to physically remove it. You may notice that I use a lot of twisty ties. I usually tinker with my uh, PCs and um, other hardware and I uh, don't like to use cable ties just because I don't like to clip them off every time that I'm inside my cases. I like to use a twisty tie so I can remove it. I wish I could use cable ties but I like to tinker too much. Cable ties are definitely a much better option than using twisty ties because then you've got extra wire hanging around that you can't clip. But I'm always inside my cases and messing around with wiring and putting in new parts and swapping out old parts and uh, it's just a lot easier for me to use twisty ties. Moral of the story is, use whatever's best for you. If you're not going to be inside this very much after you've got it completed, use zip ties. And if you do use twisty ties, like I use, be very careful since the core of those are always metal make sure they're not going to touch anything electrical it's going to conduct electricity or conduct heat and keep them as far away from any delicate components as possible and it helps to take the ends that are hanging off of them that are left over and just keep wrapping them around whatever cable or wire you're using twisty ties to tie together and wrap them all the way around so there's nothing hanging off out into the open. And if you can't tell by now, I am just rambling on to fill dead air, but I will stop now and let you listen to the last 45 seconds of music.
Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave comments, subscribe, and if you'd like to see me set up a free NAS storage, feel free to leave that in the comments. Thanks for watching.